Whoa! Hey, every whoa! Where did he go? <laughs> His head looks so different. Search oh, party. Hell, search party. Hey, guys. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of forgot that there's supposed to be a libation. Oh, yeah, gotcha. never forget that. Come on. Gotcha. No, I was no, just no. Kidding, show I must go on. <laughs> but I do like the dramatic entrance. I like the dramatic entrance. That's good. Okay. He might be onto something. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Carvers and Creators. Rewind. Hey everybody, welcome to Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with pumpkin carvers, sculptors, and multi-talented artists from around the world. First, we ask that you please give us a like and a follow on the platform you're watching us on. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from and if you have any questions for the carvers and our special guests. And a special hello to our friends watching on replay. Let's meet the Carvers. Let's do it. Why not? Why not? Do it. Hey. First, he's an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts. He was a judge on season three of Outrageous Pumpkins on the Food Network. Paul Dever, welcome. Hey, hey happy Thursday. Thursday. Hey, Paul. Happy hey, Thursday guys. to you as well. Next, he's a multimedia sculpture artist from Tucson, Arizona, and a finalist on Halloween Wars 2019 on the Food Network, Matt Harper. Bienvenidos. Hello. Aloha. Saludos. <laughs> Our guest tonight, making his fourth appearance on Carvers and Creators, is a foam fabricator, creature creator, puppet builder, monster maker, and film industry professional for over 30 years. Please, please welcome our good friend, Ted Haynes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Speech. Speech. Oh. <laughs> Four times! Wow. Yeah, I know. Jesus, we are we are embarrassed with the the bounty that is Ted Haynes. Thank you so much for coming back. So much talent all in one. Yeah. You know, I I am to carvers and creators as Steve Martin is to uh, SNL. Right? Yes, exactly. Uh, I'm gonna get up to that. What happens when I when I'm on twelve times? You are a yeah. wild and crazy guy. You get a, you get a gold watch. I think yes. Oh, cool. I I think you're our first from a four timer. <laughs> You're first. our first four timer, and but we also have someone uh, that's going to be on very soon. That's going to be our second four timer. So uh, oh. stay tuned for that. Oh, stay right. tuned for that. You guys in January then. Yes. Yeah, oh, oh, now it's a competition. I like it. I'm gonna have to get some sort of like some silver certificate award or something. There you go. Right. Exactly. Right. My name oh. is Michael Mondragon. I'll be running the show, moderating comments, and chiming in from time to time. What up? What's Whoa. up with the broken glass over your picture? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? You're right. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking about story, yeah. it every week. I'm getting I'm getting into these things. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're a superhero. I like it. Let's check out our scopes from last week. Oh, the yeah. carving subject was crying lady. Oh, Paul. Yeah, shaking your head. Not a fan. No. Oh. That was a oh, tough one. I had to walk away twice. I that was my face sitting there. <laughs> I, I, th I I had a little trouble getting back down to the scale. Like we were used, to, you get used to that scale. And then all of a sudden I'm on this scale and I'm like, my tools feel too big. Uh, oh. or, you know, I was making excuses. The excuse engine was fired up, but I mean, I was completely busted through under the chin too. It was like it was kind of inconsistent. Mm. Oh, that's that excuse engine again. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you can't tell. I think that's the beauty of getting a really good picture. And, and you know how bad it might or may not have been, but you sure as hell can't tell. It's 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 beautiful, flawless in this from, from yeah, this picture. Right. Looks yeah. great. Yeah, it's yeah. me with a wig. Yeah. That's what it feels. It feels like my <laughs> emotion trying to carve that thing. That's a lovely sad character. It is. <laughs> that was yeah. the subject. Sad lady. A crying <laughs> lady. Yeah. Crying lady. Yeah. Yeah. It won't uh, even look at you, Paul. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She better not. Uh, <laughs> averting her own. To the moon, Alice. To the moon. Oh, yeah. Better, better not. Well, so, someone thinks it was awesome, and I, I do, too. Uh, she has to. Thanks, Joey. Oh, thank you, Joey. Uh, but, Matt, you're up. This <laughs> is great. Yeah, I, this, I like right? this one. So so I struggled. I was trying. I, I, I started with crying. I had, a, I had a thick pumpkin, thankfully, so I, I had a lot to, to carve into. And then um, I was like, I made the eyelashes out of a, I cut a thin strip of, you know, whatever out of the back and then just, you know, glue those on where the eyelashes would go. And the nice part is that as it kind of spans like that roundish thing, they opened up a little bit. So I thought that was really cool, but it never looked crying to me. So I took some orange food coloring 
and some water and just dabbed it under it with a with a paintbrush and just let it naturally roll down so like she's like she has uh mascara running and i was i was like oh, i was very oh. cool happy That's after awesome. that i was unhappy until that point she looks like a sad housewife from the 50s it's <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> she burned the casserole right when yeah. you know when when dad, when dad was coming home to get his pipe and you know slippers <laughs> herbs out late again with the guys from work <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't have that third yeah. bourbon ready yeah that's right yeah not enough ice i said two cubes, exactly. martha <laughs> there's my drink i just walked yes. in where's my rob roy that's super <laughs> thick, man. You were able to pull it all the way back around the neck. That's cool. Yeah, I got lucky. Like, it, it's one of those. I'm I'm, I'm a, such a big plug for Camaro pumpkins. I don't even know. Yeah. I Camaro. haven't heard of them until real recently, but they're man, they're thick. And I got I still got another one. Oh wow! You got oh, nice. I barely have brought in a squash at this point. I could be carving ice and snow at some point. The produce <laughs> doesn't get better. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you probably get that chainsaw for Christmas so you can start doing chainsaw art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just get forced into another medium. There you Thanks, go. Margaret, well, I work in pixels and vectors, and here is my offering for this week. My my crying lady is oh she's a mess. <laughs> oh <my laughs> cutting, too many, too, cutting too many onions. Uh um, okay, wait, wait, Mickey. I I, I see a couple of little Easter eggs there. Can I can I throw one out there? Go for it. Go for Katie, it. Kenny Rogers singing "Lady." There you go. Nicely done. Okay. You got Lady Gaga. There you go. <laughs> oh, with the oh my god, that's so good. The Kenny Rogers that's one would good. be hard for some people. Lady, hey. <laughs> hey, you know that song. Oh, I know it. And yeah. I love you. <laughs> 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 good, good, good pull, Matt. Though I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, because I was trying to put it together. It's like I know that's Kenny Rogers. I'm not sure. <laughs> He'd be on this thing, right? Exactly. Yeah, Matthew, uh, King, King of the Easter eggs. eggs right? Yeah, King of the Easter eggs when it comes to these things. It's <laughs> and I like how the the price tag is like falling off of this one. Even that's great. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, up, yeah. I, I think that the fact that we're now making them album covers, I, I, I can't get away from it. I, every every time I try to get away from it, it's, they become album covers over, over again. I'm like, I just might as well just lean into it. <laughs> if it ain't broke, if it ain't broke. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Thank you, Brent. Thank you. We appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, Sorry, yeah, I, I, I got it. I got the it. parents were actually very hard to actually make. And I, just like Matt, it was actually hard to actually make, you know, tears but make him look kind of natural and stuff like that is is actually very difficult so well um ted i'd like to reintroduce you to a friend of ours a the fourth member of carvers and creators responsible for our carving subject tonight it is the halloween the spinner and oh, uh <laughs> let's all talk about it right now yeah that's the, the fifth beetle or no yes yeah yes and yeah exactly yeah Happy Thursday, everybody. <laughs> okay, Ted, you know this. This is old half for you, but to anybody watching for the first time, hello. This is the wheel. We're going to spin it twice. The first time we spin it will be the character. The second time will be the emotion to which the character has to relay. So this week's picks, we're going uh, festive. We're going to get into the season. So we have Yeti, Santa, Old, Elf, Krampus, Misfit Toy, Aquatic, Insect, Guest choice and troll. So be ready, Ted. Mm. Our second spin will be clueless, smug, jolly, embarrassed. Guest choice again. Insane, drunk, creepy, nervous, or robust. Oh boy. Come on, robust Santa. Throw me a softball. <laughs> <laughs> the true gift of Christmas. Misfit no, toy. No. Oh, it's no. that every time. I gotta stop that. We have to stop gambling, fellas. <laughs> yes. Here we go. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is gonna be a challenge. A smug misfit toy. Ooh. Holy shizen <laughs> right now. Uh did I say my connection broke up? Yeah, I hello. hello? I, I didn't get that. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Smug right. misfit toy. So, How much do I gotta pay oh. to respin? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, there's so many other good choices on their wheel. Come on, would you do that? I could be bought. I can, I mean, you, you're talking to the right guy. Yeah, Joey says it could have been a drunk Yeti. That would have been oh. pretty. <laughs> In it. my wildest dreams. 
Wait, yeah. didn't it say Drunk fast. Yeti on there? You spun Drunk Yeti. I that, saw Drunk Yeti. That's well, it. once we edit out, yeah, once we do the editing and people watch it later, yes. it'll be a... <laughs> <laughs> No, maybe, maybe, the misfit, <laughs> maybe the misfit toy is a drunk yeti. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> misfit drunken yeti. Hey, you know what's funny? Toy. You say drunk yeti. I've been a drunk holding a yeti, so that's kind of similar, right? When you got to put it in the yeti. Exactly. That's, that's true. I guess. <laughs> you know. I mean, you can't have glass bottles. That's right. That's right. What the heck am I gonna do? A he says, meaning another word. Misfit toy. Yes. Well, there that's, it is. That's why we spin the wheel, right? Yeah. Spin the wheel, make the deal. Spin so, the wheel. You guys, wait, before we go, Mickey, I, just help me remember what the f the misfit toys were. There was the, the there was a squirt gun that shot jelly. There well, the, listen. There, yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking from that. I'm just thinking from the show, but I mean, it could be anything. Oh, I know. It could be anything. It could be anything. All right. You had a trolley in the box. You had the. Yeah. The, I don't know what, what was wrong with the elephant. Polka dot. He was polka dotted. Yeah, something polka like that. Elephant. Boy, really stretching it out there with misfits, huh? <laughs> um, mine's going to be a smug butternut squash because kids in other countries play with squash, so that's a toy. <laughs> yeah, that's a toy to them. That's a toy to them. <laughs> Holy crap. All right, so if you're carving or creating with us, we're going to give you five minutes to get all your tools together, get your carving oil in order. Uh, Ted, I'm going to start with you. Uh, what is your carving oil for tonight? Well, I just had a birthday in November. And my Happy wife, birthday. wife gave Happy me, belated. thank you. My wife gave me this nice little Ooh. thing back here. And it's, uh, um, it's, uh, uh, scotches, but they're like, Ooh. like, like maybe two shots worth of, and we've gone through a few of these. <laughs> Let's see. We've gone through seven. So I just, I just pull one out. And some of the distilleries are not, um, labeled, but it does tell you. Let's see. Okay, so what do we got? Uh, here we go. Oh, cool! Nice. It's a uh, single malt Scotch whiskey, nine year old aged region. Uh, Speakside, huh? Spyside, yeah, it's all Speakside. Um, distillery. Geez, even with my glasses, I can't read this. Time for me <laughs> prescription. Um, you know, and I can't pronounce these. It's Scottish, so it's uh, Auk Roisk, the distillery. Sure. Uh, yeah, there you go. So, very cool. Could you could you have read it before the other seven shots of bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. That's up to you. What do you think? Your eyes are better than me. It's a, it's a, it's a single <laughs> single malt Scotch whiskey. Oh, and let's see. Oh, thank God I don't have to drive tonight. It's fifty percent alcohol. Fifty. Oh, whoa. Okay. holy moly! <laughs> oh, on a little cube of oh my yeah, this is much more fancy than we're used to. This is nice. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, very nicely done. Nice. That'll go. that's that's how you carve a uh, smug nice. misfit toy right there. <laughs> that was nice. That'll loosen up the joints. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Matt, you have a lot to follow up here. <laughs> I do. I do. And thankfully, this time, so I am. I am usually the guy who pulls out the most, you know, inane shit out of my, you know, uh, oh, absolute whatever. I actually have a. It's called Once in a Lifetime American Pale Ale. It's from uh, Pure Project, which is I guess San Diego, and it looks like a like a, a leather a, a couch. Leather, oh yeah, leather, I leather smell couch. sandal. I can smell sandalwood from here. Yeah, mm, you get the notes, the, the yeah. woody, the woody notes. So but it's a So I, I looked at it. It's just a, it's an American pub ale. So I think it's probably palatable. It's not your your India pale, double, triple, hazy, whatever that people oh. enjoy. So I'm gonna. I'm. I I was kind of enamored by the cool can, but. Yeah, just to say it. it uh, well, it's an actual. Uh, I don't know. Dare I say it? It's a. Uh, it's a craft beer. Look so, at you. Look at me. Right. I'm, I'm, not I'm, an I'm idea. Yeah. That's, that's not. I look way. at that, and I. The first thing that comes to my mind is uh, M's door from James Bond. That's why I would have bought it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm. I'm curious to see what it looks like. Hang on. Let's just do the four. It's yeah. Kind of a, Fancy couch flavor, and then <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know how you feel support these things, but that's a lot of uh, foam there. Oh boy, here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, delightful. <laughs> well, it's the best foam you've had all day, <laughs> but not the only. Exactly. I look at it. <laughs> I'm back. That's great. 
Paul, what do you got? Okay. So <laughs> we're, uh, I'm going to give another shout out to one of my favorite breweries, my, Mighty Squirrel, responsible for one of our favorites, the Cloud Candy. And uh, this one's called Dear Mino. And this guy reminds me of Matt with a goatee, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a it's a single hopped IPA, but so this is the guy apparently responsible for getting Mighty Squirrel on the map. Oh, the story yeah. basically reads he's the man behind, you know, he's the the go getter that pushed this pushed this brewery. So, cheers to Mino. And um, I haven't had a bad Mighty Squirrel yet, so this should be Ooh, right right yes. up there. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, we are carvers and creators. So um, I, when I saw this beer, I had to get it uh, specifically for the show. This is the uh, from one of my favorite breweries called Green Cheek, which I've I think I've had it last week even. This is the pumpkin spice rhymes with nice pumpkin Ooh. ale. Uh, it says winter ale with super uh, yummy spices. So. Yeah, nice. it's it's All fantastic. Right, nice. it's, it's oh yeah, great. I remember the parrot. You've had yeah. this a couple yeah. times. They always have the parrot. So this is this is an awesome one. So cool. uh, cheers, cheers to all of our creations uh, tonight. And uh, Ted, are you creating or are you just sitting back tonight? I'm going to try to create. We're going to see how oh. much uh, you know. I'm going to do my best at creating after sipping this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Well, while you're doing that, why don't Yummy. we? I, I think we've talked about this before, but um, I, I love this picture because <laughs> your, your Instagram, kid. You start over your Instagram, correct? I did start over on my Instagram through some oh. unfortunate things that I just don't even want to talk about. My old Instagram is still there. So if you want to, you know, like it, follow it, that's great. That's uh, Foam Faber. But then I started over with uh, the Foam Faber so on Instagram. So. That's always the picture I like to start out with anything. And that's actually the first picture of my portfolio as well. So oh. that's, that's me. That's a nine or 10 year old me that just wanted to build puppets so bad. And I begged my mom to ask me or to, to show me how to use a sewing machine. So that's my Kermit that I built when I was like nine or 10, I think about nine. So wow. I found a nice fleece and yeah. Unfortunately, he lasted about a year. He got stolen. What? Oh, no. Yeah. Same son of a bitch that locked you out of your Instagram account, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> clearly. I, we'll, we'll see. I, it was, it was, I took him for show and tell, and I went to a Catholic grade school, and one of somebody who I went to school with took him. <laughs> so, oh, what? It's the saddest so, story okay. I've ever heard. No, you know, hopefully somebody's appreciated it. So, you know, I don't know if it's still around anywhere, but. Uh, well, all I can say is whoever has that there. thing has probably got had a lifetime of shitty karma. Yeah. yeah right. Right. Somebody yeah. right now is probably going, holy crap, this was Ted's. I thought it just got left in the gymnasium. <laughs> um, It'll show up in the mail. Jail. It's like Rosebud. Yeah, I, I'm Rose. dragging this guy over. Oh, oh wow, that's a big. That's I, I, a big I, it was it was like one of the last pumpkins I found a in the store, like right after Halloween. So I've got two big ones. So, oh, nice. or you know, there was this this little one that I had I had started, but you know, I'll do a little carving on, and then I'll just call it done. Oh, look at that! I still that's I always yeah. I always like to bring I always like to bring this one up. So <laughs> it is such a such a favorite of mine. Like every, every the whole story behind it, that whole thing. Thanks, Mick. Look at Mickey the, on the spot. That whole story of like because I think you know seeing that in person too. And then I have I have my uh, beautiful copy, which yeah. I think oh, your, you guys little three D print. Yeah, yeah, you guys can get these um, yourselves at uh, Monster Palooza. I'm sure you probably have more, but this is this is my little. I've version. got more. Yeah. Oh, I love this I've got thing. A, I got to put them up on. Um, Etsy page. I don't have them up, so I want to try to offer some as painted and some unpainted. So um, yeah. My uh, butter, my buddy uh, Peter Luong, um, uh, the 3D scan helper on Instagram, uh, scanned it for me, and so I was able to just print out a ton. I was selling them at uh, Monster Palooza. So, oh, we met him. We met him there. Uh, yeah, he he actually, me. I think he scans up my yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good. He actually reached out because there's a scanner on the market now. He was just kind of giving us the heads up if we were – because Matt and I got the, the Revo Point scanners. 
Okay. Yep. And he was just saying that there's another one that came out, you know, obviously a little bit more, he said, but it's, you know, the next level up for a good price. So I thought that was pretty nice. So just to reach out randomly and be like, Hey, I remember you guys from Monster Palooza. So Peter's yeah. Peter's a great guy and just, you know, I met him. It was just one of those things where it was like I wanted to scan something and a buddy of mine said, Call this guy. He just really wants to help folks out and that's what he did. So Awesome. Cheers. And now we've become good friends. So yeah, cheers to Peter. So yeah. And I, and did I he, hold the phone call. Didn't he was there some tie in between him and a person who has a birthday today, Rick Baker? Was there some like didn't he do something with Rick yes, and you? Yeah. So he he's actually been working with Rick for a while. Um he had helped Rick with some of his 3D printers and uh started doing some scanning with him as well. So yeah, he, Peter's been working with Rick for several years now, I think. Oh, wow. Okay. And oh, cool. Peter was working with um, a company here in uh, L.A., right in Burbank, called uh, Motion Picture Effect. And they're doing a thing, a Monster Kids program. So Peter was at Monster Palooza scanning people and um, scanning kids, scanning people in makeups and all that sort of thing. So. I've got these new tools to try out because oh. somebody at the booth right next to me at Monster Palooza gave me all these really kick-ass oh. ribbon tools. So, <laughs> well, I hope they I, work. I, I, I hear I'm going to be neighbors with somebody at Monster Palooza again. It's, yeah. <laughs> Damn straight, right, Paul? Yes. Yes. I don't know. So do we, do you, we, I think we know the number, right? Or, or do we? I, I guess I, does it, it's too early, really. I, well, no, I, I know. Yeah, I know what my booth is going to be, but honestly, I can't remember right off the bat. Um, and uh, hopefully, this isn't making too much noise. But oh, no. yeah, ASMR, <laughs> that's, the, that's the sexiest noise in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll be honest. It's like I think my first time actually, you know, digging into like a, a full fledged pumpkin. I, I had that little one, a little guy, yeah, yeah, that shows that we did. And it was starting uh, to rot. Was like, I remember, right? It was. Yeah, it was right. actually. Yeah, it was not a good pumpkin. Yeah. And uh, I did like a little Frankenstein or something, and um, it was not. It was not good. So this is like the first time I think like really digging into one. Oh, so man. I don't. Know, this could really suck. <laughs> Ted, that's what we say before every single car. Yeah. <laughs> this could you know, be it the could, worst one this, yet. Maybe for a great bad. TV. So. Oh man! At least the at least the subject's easy. Yeah, yeah, piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh my well, god! Well, if it doesn't work out, then you'll end up with crying man. So yes, yes, in in human yeah. form. Yeah. In human form, It'd be like, oh, it sucks. Why? <laughs> Announce a retirement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for tuning into the last episode of Carver's. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How the hell? So Ted, tell us about this. Uh, I love this, by the I, way. I didn't, I didn't. I've never seen this uh, before. That was so much fun. So I posted that. I think even just yesterday on uh, Werewolf Wednesday. Um, so that, uh, my good friend uh, um, uh, 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 David Woodruff uh, did that makeup on me back in January, I think, of this year. So it's nearly a year old. And he was doing this this neat tribute makeup um, of obviously Lon Chaney Jr. in the Wolfman makeup, and uh, and I volunteered. It was like, ah, put it on me. I'll sit there for a couple hours and put a Wolfman makeup on. Oh, and then the gentleman that I'm uh, creeping up behind there, that's uh, Ron Chaney, who is the grandson of Lon Chaney Jr. Oh no way! Wow! Wow! So he came out to the shoot and. Uh, uh, posed for a few pictures and, um, you know, really nice guy. So really great to talk to him and kind of, you know, just, just ask him about his, his grandpa, you know, it's like not, wow. not talk about Lon Chaney Jr. But just like ask about your grandpa, you know, type thing. It was, it was very kind of interesting. So, you know, and I've had two kind of experiences like that, both with David Woodruff. Um, and, uh, David did a Frankenstein makeup as well on, a, on another person, not on me. But it, again, it was a you know like a Karloff tribute um, makeup and uh, of the Frankenstein monster. 
and he had lost his uh, his chauffeur for the day for uh, Sarah Karloff was going to come to the shoot. And he said, Ted, do you want to drive out to Palm Springs and pick up Sarah Karloff and kind of just uh, be her right hand man for a full day? And I was like, yes, I do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's that was my job. So I've had two of these really fun, interesting jobs with David, one in a makeup and one as a chauffeur. So, you know, it's, a, it's like, you know, why, why wouldn't I drive on drive around Sarah Karloff all day oh. long? And at, uh, the, the, is that the her? beauty there on the, no, the, oh. the beauty on the right there is, uh, Kayla Emerson. And, uh, she's done a lot of modeling. She did some modeling with us as well. Um, with David and she's a, she's an actress. She's a performer. She's behind the scenes. She's in front of the camera. So she's all around amazing talent. And, uh, so she she was the femme fatale for that shoot. Oh my god! And some of these pictures, like especially with Kayla, um, David was trying to recreate some of the old publicity stills that they had done with uh, Lon Chaney Jr. for the actual Wolfman. Okay. And so we had a lot of these stills that we were like looking at here, and you know, David and the photographer were both like, ah, "Get your hand up a little bit more and try to do this and get in here." Um, okay. I don't know why it's telling me my computer is low on battery, but I'm actually plugged in. So I don't, let me, uh, let me make uh, sure I'm plugged in. Hold, hold on yeah. a second guys. <laughs> no, I'm not plugged in. Whoa, my, laptop whoa, whoa. Is, my laptop is plugged into, um, I got to find an extension cord. To an empty beer can. <laughs> it's plugged into an empty beer can. So, uh, See what happens when you start drinking, you know, scotch early in the uh, show, you know, exactly. Okay, you my computer really is. That. I had I had my uh, had my computer plugged into the uh, power strip on my table here, but I forgot that I had unplugged the power strip. So, yeah. <laughs> like, so I guess like, computers yeah. computers can help you. I guess in this case, I, they, yes, it actually reminded me of something. So it's been... <laughs> kept us on the air. Good, good, good. You would have you would have had to call your other. Uh, timer and said hey fill in really quick ted just yeah, yeah. you get half you get you get half credit that way <laughs> half <Exactly. credit. laughs> oh i love these wait i got a question for you when you went out to pick yeah, up yeah. boris karloff's daughter or are you talking with lon Sarah. cheney's grand, grandson or son i guess that was his son huh? lon cheney's grandson grandson so i mean you know they, they were like the heyday of you know of, of hollywood actors and they the the kind of the pioneers of, of horror and, and all that you know that whole genre so what 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 kind of people were they like were they um in, in both cases were they you know were they happy to talk about that or was it kind of like you know they've, they've oh absolutely of... okay okay it's, like it, it, it's funny with both um sarah, sarah and my mom separated by birth by just a few days so oh, okay. Okay. Same, same year and and by a few days and then sarah shares a birthday with her dad um boris karloff and then i share a birthday with my mom so wow. that was kind of something fun that we got to talk about and uh, okay. you will never meet a bigger you know boris karloff fan and or lon cheney jr senior fan than their kids or grandkids or oh okay or okay, whatever um sarah is just you know the way she talked about her dad was and, and again that was kind of fun it's just like well, what did your dad think of this or what did you you know you're not talking about boris Karloff. you're just talking about somebody's dad yeah yeah and uh same thing with with ron cheney you know just asking him questions about his his you know of course he, he never met his uh his great grandfather um you know Lon Chaney senior but yeah. um but yeah just talking to him about his his grandpa you know it, it's That's it's cool. very kind of interesting and of course they're just they're huge fans they're keeping their legacy alive and they're also just huge fans um you know Sarah I was lucky enough to um I was lucky enough to get a tour of her house and uh, it was just memorabilia everywhere of uh right, a board versus Karloff and uh so you know that was great and she was like oh yeah. go over and take a look at the emmy or the uh the grammy 
that uh, that dad won for uh, the Grinch. Oh, wow. like, oh my God, it is. And I'm sitting here looking at it and not, and she goes, Oh no, pick it up, pick it up and hold it. She goes, Oh, I'll take a picture of you holding that. And, oh my God. You know? Yeah. Cool. It was so much fun. It's amazing. So cool. Smug, make smug it misfit toy. Smug. Smug. I am so mad at the wheel right now. I can't, I'm, I'm seeing red. I, just, <laughs> I don't understand what what I what did I do wrong to deserve that? I mean, come on. <laughs> so Ted, so Ted, you actually did a, uh, a very. Uh, I mean, from the episodes before, we've talked about it. Uh, your Yoda, but your Yoda actually went on a road trip. <laughs> and, Yoda uh, did a road trip. Yeah. Yeah. So just to get everybody re, re familiarized with this, I mean, this is just. Super, super cool, and uh, you actually documented, um, you got it super close, showing everything, uh, showing how, how you did all the hair and everything. I mean, th this was, how long did this take to make? You know, I worked on him off and on, because I, honestly, I, I had multiple projects going at the same time. I did the Yoda, the Frankenstein, who's sitting back here, and then I had the Metal Luna Mutant, so I decided it's like, I'm going to do like three or four projects at once. And then so I can set them down and pick something else up. But, you know, if I probably had to add up the hours, it's probably just two full straight weeks, you know, probably like 80 hours, maybe, or maybe a hundred hours on that. And, you know, obviously it's from the ground up. So it was sculpting him in foam, doing all the latex and cotton tissue work for the detailing and, uh, made the clothes. And then, uh, Right when COVID hit, um, it was coming up at Christmas time, and my mom, who lives in Wisconsin, had been basically by herself, you know, hadn't yeah. been going out anywhere. My sister was delivering groceries to her, and so I decided I was going to go spend the entire month of December with her. Instead of getting on a plane at that time, I drove cross-country, and I took Yoda with me, oh, and so we... Yeah. We stopped at uh, just all kinds of. I, I tried to find some fun roadside attractions. Yeah, there you go, Devil's Tower. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. If anybody, you know, yeah. from that that that, that well-known space uh, adventure. Uh, yeah, Close Encounters. Close Encounters. Uh, so we stopped there, and we stopped at like the big thermometer outside of Las Vegas, and yes, Blue Earth, Minnesota. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> that's the Jolly Green Giant, and it was. Oh my God! There's a whole story behind it. It's like a 55 foot tall Jolly Green Giant. So it was, it was one one green giant to another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Make it make him yeah, snow. There we go. <laughs> and that's, that's that's my hometown, Wisconsin Rapids, and Wisconsin there. And so we we had to stop by, and that's all the snow that was there when we showed up. So. Oh. That, it reminds me, like I, I growing up in Arizona. Matt and I grew up in Arizona, and I I remember vividly the first time I ever saw snow was like in my teens. Like uh, it, I had never seen snow. Like obviously we did in Phoenix, we did it didn't snow at all. Um, so, but this one reminds me of it. It was just a little patch. I'm like, oh, hey, that, I saw, I saw snow for the first time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, and that's like people out here. It's like when I talk about like cold winters where it was like, you know, 40 below zero or 60 below zero with the wind chill factor. And you're like, what? Yes. Exactly. You know, or, or, you know, three <laughs> falls and yeah, it's, it's like, what do you mean? Yeah. yeah. Yoda out in the cold desert there. I think that's right outside of Las Vegas. Oh wow! Yep. yep. And then uh, but now he's yeah. There's the oh, the big thermometer, the yeah, world's the largest thermometer. thermometer. Yeah, and that's well before Vegas. I think that's still in California. There, that was yeah the first day of the trip. It's it's not prim. Prim is right outside that, but uh, but yeah, it's right it's right just south of there, I believe. You, know, um, you should have taken him to one of those brothels, you know, like in, in the bunny, the bunny ranch. ranch. Yeah. <laughs> Next trip. Next trip. Next trip. <laughs> like one of my he's, favorite he's actually... HBO shows growing up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was like Game of Thrones, but like Game of Bones. <laughs> you know, you know, the Yoda wanted to go, but he just didn't. He was kind enough not to ask. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> if he was asked, he would have been like, yeah, I guess. Uh, all right, yeah, I guess. I'll That's go cool. if you want to go. Yeah, I wasn't gonna. You know, I wasn't gonna. That's little whorehouse in Dagobah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, and the way he talks, it's kind of hard to really. He, has to, he doesn't really get to the point, you know. <laughs> get him, Yoda does. You know? we go. Brothel we go. <laughs> Pay for love, I do. ATM, they have yes. <laughs> Debit card. <laughs> Debit yeah. card they have. <laughs> That's we're spiraling. You know, you can't make fun of Yoda. Come on, stop. Yeah, <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, and he's he's still at uh, he's still in Wisconsin at my mom's house. Whoa! Oh, and, uh, and I was I was texting my mom right before we went on because there's a chance she might be watching. I'm not sure if she is or not. So, oh great! But yeah, Yoda Yoda's still at my mom's house. So just to to keep her company, I left him. So every time I go back. I, I dress him in a little outfit for the for the season. So of course I was back for Thanksgiving and um wow. that's so great. You get a little pilgrimed and I think right now and I didn't take a picture of him, but he's 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 back at her place right now near the Christmas tree uh with a Santa hat on. So, <laughs> that's so that's cool. awesome. there you have it. <laughs> yeah. Little pilgrim Yoda. Ah, so good. Poda. So this this is a fascinating project that you were working on and we can really, we can really go in depth in this cause I actually have the video from it so we can actually see exactly how it all works. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, this is, this is super cool. Like uh, how, how did this project come, come to be? Well, this, this was actually was a really quick build. And again, this was for the, uh, the werewolf shoot, the, uh, the Lon Chaney shoot. And I had talked to David, I think like the night before the shoot or maybe the morning of the shoot. And I said, what are you guys doing for feet? And he said, geez, I didn't even think of it. We don't have feet. Mm. And I was like, let me see what I can come up with. And so I think this was about a six or eight hour build. Wow. Oh and Fast. I just happened to have some national fiber technology fur lying around from another project. And uh, of course, I've always got foam lying around. And I did uh, a pair of old sneakers, and those were glued to a, an aluminum plate. And in the black foam that you see there is called shoe soling. It's a super dense um, black rubber. And so I could actually pop up and walk on my toes on those. So normally, I just would fall back onto my heels and walk normally. But then when the camera's on or when you're rolling, you can pop back up onto the heels. It wasn't the easiest to walk in or the most comfortable. And I know on the right hand picture there, they're they're it looks like they're sticking straight up. They really weren't. They're they're leaning back a little bit more of an angle. So it's a little bit easier to walk. But when you get your weight out in front and it it worked. I'd like to I'd like to rebuild them. But again, that was a super quick build. And those are the builds I love doing kind of the most where you don't have time to think about what you're doing. You just have to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've built things similar to this before. And I knew that it's like, well, I've got hours before I have to leave for the shoot before they start the makeup. And, uh, you know, I knew I'd be sitting there for a couple hours. So it's like, yeah, you know, I had six or eight hours to do these. So I got up early and started banging them out. So on the right hand side too, there's just upholstery foam. Uh, a small block of foam that I had gotten, put that on each toe and started carving that out with razor blades and exacto knives. And then uh, uh, carved the uh, the texture into it, the toes and toenails and whatever, and coated that with latex rubber. So That's again, insane. just a super quick build, yes. you know, and I, I remember having, you know, I've done that before for commercials or whatever too. It's like last minute. It's like, uh, they just called for this show and something's got to be done like super. I remember working at K and B years ago and uh, we did a lot of stuff for the, the uh, show, Allie McBeal. Do you guys remember Allie? Oh, sure. of course. Yeah. 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 With Callista <laughs> Flockhart. And uh, they would always have like these kooky, goofy little things. And I remember I had to make a lemon head, like a, a mask of like a, an actual lemon. 
And it was just one of these things. I'm sure it was like Greg Nicotero, Howard Berger came to me real quick and said, Ted, we need a lemon, a lemon mask. that has got to fit over somebody's head really tight on the neck. And we need it by the end of the day. And just, oh. okay. And just, yep. just a lemon, right? Just a lemon. So I fabricated it, coated it, you know, textured it, you know, painted it, all that kind of stuff. And then it left and I had no idea what it was even for. And at the time I was watching that show, the Alan McBeal show and weeks and weeks later, I'm watching the episode and it's like, Oh, that's weird. She's got a lemon head. Hey, I made that. <laughs> Those things. That's awesome. That was, we were kept so crazy busy at K and B that happened a lot where I would watch a movie or a TV show and the credits would be running. And I would even forget that I had built something and it's like, Oh, I for, yeah, I worked on this. Never uh, <laughs> that, that tells you how fast you were probably working. You probably have so many projects you've forgotten. Yeah, they had so many projects there. I mean, we'd work on ER and Chicago Hope and um, Alan McBeal and just any little TV show that would – oh, Picket Fences. We did a lot for the TV show Picket Fences with Tom Skerritt. Remember oh, that show? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I got to build a couple of frozen bodies for that. Ooh. It was uh, it was this one mysterious freezer that uh, was in a house that mysteriously killed two people. I think the first one I built was the actor was a uh, Richard Major. He was the he was the dog keeper in the thing. Oh wow! Um, oh, and uh, but he was I think the mayor in the town or something, and something happened where he ended up in the freezer dead. So. At K and B, we we did ahead of him, and I sculpted the body, and we did all the frost effects on it. And oh, then wow. the next season, I think they killed somebody else in that freezer, and I can't remember. Um, Zelda Rubenstein was her name, Whoa. and she was the uh, the woman that was in the the first uh, Poltergeist film. She was the the a little lady, the psychic. Yes. Yeah. Oh no way! Right, Caroline. You, she exactly she um she was on that show and i think she was like the secretary or something like that at the uh police station and uh her character was killed off and she fell into that same freezer so we had to do a likeness sculpt on her and so what i got a question for you so you've posted some of those or, or have you ever posted some of those pictures because one of the one of the things you know, that I, I don't know if i have i've got to post really? those yeah like yeah I've they'd be fascinating to see and one of the things that the telltale things, and I know your work would, would do this, was when, when Instagram flags it as, you know, um, what, what's the right thing, Paul? Sensitive content. Sensitive, sensitive, sensitive content. content. So that's like I'm such a- me that. But that is such a, like a, a, like a badge, of, <laughs> badge of courage, you know, like, you look what I, I made this, and now all of a sudden it, it's, it's so good that people think it's real. I mean, I- I'd love to see if, if you get that kind of flag and not that you need more trouble. I, you with know what? I'll, I'll try to dig those pictures out. We're in the process of moving the shop. So uh, I don't know where the pictures are. So, but I'll try to find them. Yeah. I let me... I've got pictures of the, the Zelda Rubenstein and I've got the pictures of the, the Richard Major. How fun. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me finish this one out. So, cause I, I want to yeah. show yeah, the, yeah, sorry. the video of it. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh there you go. Oh my God. Let me narrate. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> wow. Not bad. I mean, I could stay steady-ish on them. How and, long you know, could you do that? Without me? That looked painful a little bit. It's it. They, they weren't the best. And I mean, normally if I was going to bang something like that out in a day, that would be a prototype. Right. And then I would figure out, okay, what have I done wrong? What can I do different? And, right. um, you know, so then I do another pair, and that's basically what that was. That was a it was a prototype, but it was a working prototype. Yeah. So I I didn't have time to rebuild that, and I knew that this was going to be for stills. So the great thing was is, uh, you know, I took them to set, got the makeup put on, and I could put those on, you know, on on set right at the time, right. and then I could walk normally on them. It looked really silly. It looked like I was walking like Charlie Chaplin or something with these large. Wolf feet, and then at the moment they would say, "Okay, we're going to shoot," and I would just pop up on my toes and get into a pose, and uh, they would shoot the pictures, and I'd pop back down, and or I would just hold it as long as I could, and then when I would fall down onto my feet, the photographer would stop shooting pictures, so ah, just to give me a, a little break. 
but uh so cool. but they were they were a lot of fun yeah and so and sure. you weren't you also did the actually uh conceptualizing yeah. this as well this these were for um these were for a film that i can't say anything about but i can show the pictures um it's just it was it was a film that uh was in development and i was asked and i was like humbled to be asked to do these as uh, concept designs. Um, they needed wolves, they need uh, werewolves, they needed witches. Um, we were just starting to do some zombie designs and then they kind of pulled the plug on the project. Uh, uh, nice. uh, so I didn't get a chance to, to do the zombies. Um, but it was, it was really fun to obviously be asked to do this because I'd never been asked to do concept designs before. And, you know, it's, really intimidating it's like i hope it's what you want it's like yeah. and they asked me because they liked my work so um you know they had seen prior so well i love the design of all all of the yeah. I mean, i've seen these before and every time i'm like damn those those have got to get out there in the world somehow they're, they're that, so there's such a great uh character design of all of them it's, yeah every little bit of it like the the the, the outfits he's wearing you know, just say so much about you know what, what the guys and even like the 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 hair the flicking of the you know the whatever you, whatever you call that cool ass yeah hair, the right? little the little flip of the hair I was, yes, I was right. trying I to love that uh, that eighties uh, that kind of eighties flip the you know like feather hair. Feather hair. hair in the eighties <laughs> yes yes the the part well, I'll, I'll admit the uh, the werewolf to the left there um, it's just it's me you know so it and actually both of them are me so I just got into a pose and. Mm -hmm. um my wife or my daughter took a couple of pictures and you know i did some quick sketches over the top so we didn't have a ton of time to do these because like i said that the the job was in development so it's like yeah. they needed to see they need to see stuff quickly so yeah each one of those i think is you know a few hours of work maybe yeah um, wow. you know so i had a i had to bang out a lot of pictures and like you know one night even but tons of fun. You yeah, know, I just I love doing that kind of work, and I was just so happy to be asked to to do it. You know, and I just I can't I can't tell you who asked me to do it or why they asked me to do it or <laughs> what it was for. And that's that's always the hardest thing is to talk about these projects, um, you know, or not being able to talk about projects that yeah. you were asked to do things. Um, you know, to do it just sometimes it just sits there and. You know, we did at the shops too. There's, there's, there's a giant show coming out soon. That if you live in any big city, there's tons of posters coming. You know, I'm not going to say what it was, but there's posters all over the place for a a, a, a franchise film, and uh, you know, it's a sequel ah. that I worked on hey. four years ago. Wow that I haven't been able to say anything about mm. it for at least four to five years. Oh my God. Because I worked on it a little bit. And even if anybody guesses, I will not tell you <laughs> yes or no, that that's what I'm Why talking I about. I, I but, got an uh, idea, but I won't, I won't even, I won't even say it out loud because I don't want to make you squirm, but I think I have it. You can idea. say a guess and I, 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 I'll have the best poker face I can possibly put on. I'm going to go but, with um, once bitten part two, Jim Carrey returns to his oh, original. Damn world. it. Oh, wait, how was my pocket? Face? Whoa. I mean, I have no idea. Once bitten two. I'm, I was going to do I'm bad done. news bears. Go to Japan again. <laughs> again. <laughs> again. Uh. So, I mean, but that, yeah, that's another, another film that's coming up, but I mean, it's back with, like when I worked on uh, uh, Avengers Endgame, and I was on set for that and was standing over the shoulder of one of the editors because we were we were shooting for about a week all of these uh like either new scenes that they came up with they wanted to get a little bit more information or some new stuff that they had come up with and it's like you know this would tell the story a little bit more so we let's get this shot let's get that shot and that's with every film sure that this happens and I was over the shoulder of the editor that had like five screens or three big screens in front of them. And I was peeking over the shoulder, just watching. Nobody was like guarding it. And all of a sudden I see Captain America pick up that hammer. And I'm like, 
Uh, Holy crap. <laughs> I had a sit on that for, dude, I can't tell you. It was, it was like <laughs> anywhere from months to almost a year. Oh. And I came home and my daughter was like, did you see anything cool? And it's like, oh. I saw a lot of cool stuff. I said, do you want to know or not? And she's like, mm, no, don't tell me. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I sat on that one for forever. I mean, it, there was a lot of stuff, like huge secret stuff that I just like, well, I can't say this to anybody for a good chunk of time. And oh, my gosh. Wow. Yes. Even my wife kind of commended me when, when we went and saw the film. And it was like, you know, Captain picking up the hammer. It was, you know, Tony with the glove because I was there for the oh, snap. Oh, good Lord. That. Yeah. I actually, I got to put Robert in the suit along with two colleagues from work, um, Tracy and Vicky. Uh, we were on set and uh, we had Robert's Iron Man, you know, the, the part of the suit that he would wear. And, uh, you know, we got to suit him up in that for the last time. And it was kind of up to him whether he wanted it or not, because he had like the, the motion capture pajamas on. And, uh, you know, he kind of looked at it and it's like, Am I putting that on? And I said, you want to put it on? And he goes, well, it's the last time. So oh, he came just... over and put it on. And, you know, I got to be there for the snap, which was very cool. Oh, my God. And again, sat on that info for a year. <laughs> yeah, all right. Wow. So, How cool is that? So some of the other things you, you end up having to sit on or some of the like, kind of the side projects you work on for, like, in the case, I think we – looked at it last time we talked was your Aloy, your your PS5 or your you know PlayStation yeah. characters and stuff for the big debuts and stuff like that. And the the Ratchet and Clank are the ones that are that I just saw that were kind of under wraps for a long time. Now that's out. Um and then of course yeah, the, uh, the Sack Boy and all those wonderful so so from a video game perspective is it, it, it it's not the same level of excitement for, for having to hide that for a long time I imagine but um you know it's yeah, it's still work. I mean, we're proud of the work that we did. It was, it was myself and my wife, and yeah. I mean, we had a decent crew. It was um, good friends of ours, and it was. It's really great to be able to hire and work with good friends. You know, so we had yeah. David Woodruff was over here at the shop, and uh, my good friend Jasper and Alana were here, and you know, we we did tons of work, and um, we still want to, regardless of the project, whether it's a, a an end game. Or it's you know a, a PlayStation or a commercial or something like that. It's still work that you're proud of and you want to show sure. off that work. And just kind of sitting on all those photographs and kind of going, oh, I can't talk about this or I can't show it because yeah. they, you know the, the the gaming people or the uh, the studios they want to be in charge of releasing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And whether Absolutely. or not it's you know there was really nothing different about our Ratchet and Clank than um, something that you've seen before in the video games. But it's just, it was a brand new suit. They paid for it. So they yeah. want to be able to debut it first. And I yeah. I get that, you know, yeah. that's that's their prerogative. And uh, so, yeah, we still had to sit on that. But then finally we were able to, when they, what was it? Uh, Horizon uh, Forbidden West was the, uh, yeah. the game that yeah. has the character Aloy. And or I, Aloy. I played that game. I loved, yeah, I played. Oh it, yeah. And you, you. I mean, again, I'm. I uh, I shouldn't, you know, be all jumping up and down about that. I sat and played the video game on the PS, you know, whatever. But I, I it was super fun, and I, I think I was even more enamored to play it after seeing the work you're doing because you you nailed that character so well. Um, every was, detail, every little tiny thing about because she's in this in this kind of modern ancient world effectively where there's robots and and um in, in you know cave but they dress in in very you know uh it reeds and grasses and you know very primitive looking outfits right. but it's modern so it's but in, and i was just blown away by the the level of detail you guys captured in in um thanks in her outfits and it's it, that you know, was it, it enhanced the a game a lot play. of that one was my my wife um that was my wife alona who was in charge of that costume so that costume, I did a lot of the tech work where I was, you know, helping with molding and casting pieces, um, you know, trimming pieces, things like that. But the Aloy costume, uh, we had to custom sculpt all of these pieces, you know, whether it be the, the gauntlets or the uh, um, 
Oh, there was this chest plate. There was a, a skirt. There was a, a quiver for her bow and arrow. You know, we 3D printed, you know, we got all the game assets, which was really neat. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was really fun to have those assets. But then a good friend of mine, James Springham, um, he broke down all those assets. And so we could 3D print those on the machines I've got right here. And uh, so the, the, the bow and arrows and some of the gauntlet pieces that I had, another friend, uh, Ashley Stegen, uh, did some modeling of the gauntlet pieces and boot pieces. But then my wife, Alona, actually hand sculpted or hand wove a lot of those pieces. Wow. And uh, so good. some of that costume, I need, to, I need to repost a lot of that on my new Instagram on uh, The Foam Faber. You can still see that stuff on the old page, which was um, Foam Faber. Uh, but yeah, it just, and then Kayla is actually, we used uh, her. She was happy enough or, or we were lucky enough to get her to, to wear the costume and she was like the perfect size and mm. we went to griffith park and shot some really nice pictures of her so, so um cool. yeah it was great and then of course you know we did actually i don't think i've actually shown pictures of Sackboy yet but that was from the game a uh, little big planet yeah and that was a ton of fun to to recreate that costume i bet i think we'll probably be posting pictures soon of that one and yeah ratchet and clank were tons of fun to to build just because they've got so much character and um you know it's just so many different things it, the fact that we were doing so much 3d printing with both of those characters mm -hmm. and it was something really new to us to begin with you know so i, I got two um smaller 5k epax machines for the 3d printing and uh you know, we started out because the beds aren't that big. So we've got the the Clank character and his head's about almost the size of a bowling ball. And we had to cut that straight down the middle, you know, left and right, and then top to bottom. And then again, this way. So it was eight pieces that we had to put back together and body shop and clean up. And then we did a silicone mold on that because the machine just wasn't big enough. Well, then I ended up getting a frozen Mega 8K. So I, I could have printed that head on that head. I uh, had the machine, but it was just something new that we were getting into. And it was like, do we invest in the bigger machine? How do we do this? And right. so. Yeah. McFrazzle Stash I, actually is making mention of your, your paint bottles back there that has a great story behind it. Oh, the testers. Yeah. The testers paint bottles. And that was another thing that, so I worked with uh, my good friend, Tom Woodruff, um, doing a, uh, uh, an Aurora, a six and a half foot tall Aurora Frankenstein and uh, model kit, you know, the, uh, the kit that was released in 1962, I believe. And that was their first, first monster in the Aurora line. And so, yeah, we, Tom had the idea. It's like, let's build a six and a half foot tall model kit. And I said, well, that's cool. I said, but you know, it'd be really fun is kind of try to recreate what was on our tables when we were kids. I said, so let's do the box and let's do the testers bottles. And um, mm. we've got the, the paintbrushes are sitting right here as well. So, oh my God. Uh, so, yeah. cool. <laughs> so we, we did, uh, wow. I think it's, <laughs> it's eight, eight times scale. And then my wife, my wife Alona did these brushes. So this is a poplar wood. Oh my God. And then uh, this is just a, is EVA foam for the tip here. And then I think this is horse hair that we had left over from another project oh my for God. the uh, brush. And then, of course, she did all the, the stenciling. On oh, the nose, but yeah. that's, that's nice big wooden brushes. Sweet. And um, so Alona did those. And then uh, my buddy Jasper did. Uh, he did the modeling for the uh, the testers bottles. I'll take down a. I was gonna say I was gonna take down a crappy one, but it, it, it's not a crappy one. It's just painted to look kind of crappy. <laughs> yeah, so you know we did. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been really used uh, lovingly, you know, by yeah, a young yeah. used one. So Jasper did the uh, the model for this, and so it was done in two pieces diagonally like this. You can still see the split, and so you've got the outside of the jar and the inside of the jar because the testers had that 
that look to it. So I wanted it to, okay. make, to look as if it's solid glass. Yeah, thick glass. Yeah. 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 That's and nice. So then again, my wife Ilona did all of the uh, the graphics for this. So she did this from, from nothing. And then those were decals, and she did all the painting and weathering on the caps. And oh my god, paints so good. Yeah. So these are this is just so much fun to have in the shop. So yeah, yeah. E even even and the actually, notches in the top, like have those. If you like, you have paint on your fingers, right? And so I guess yeah, yeah, right. so I think so this good. is one of the more pristine bottles. They have, yeah, they haven't gotten to that one yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, they haven't quite opened this one up yet. So. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there's just, you know, it just Alona did all this great like weathering in here. Yeah, just she's the, amazing. You know, just the, in the caps. Just, you, you have to do that. You can't just paint that cap white, you know. Right. No, it has to look, no. you know, it's like this one. It's like clearly you couldn't get this open. Right. So somebody, you know, you can see the, the little scratches up here. They must have used yes. the pliers on that. Yes, right. <laughs> to open that up. <laughs> so cool. As they, yeah, uh, what they say, there's no straight lines in nature, right? So it's like never, you know, never, right? So great. But yeah, that was a great project. So we spent, I think we got that together. You know, Tom had that idea, and then I had the the stupid idea of going, let's make it bigger. <laughs> so we did. We did the. We did five testers bottles. We did the paint brushes. My wife Ilona did the big um, testers glue bottle. Um, oh, and that yeah. was all done on the EVA foam, and we did silicone molds on all of the uh, the foam milled pieces, and uh, those all cast in fiberglass. And then we took that to Monster Palooza, yeah. and of course we also had a nine foot tall Aurora box, box. You know, the box that yeah. the kit would come in, and so that was standing up behind it. So, yeah, that was the star. That was literally the star of the museum, in my opinion. I don't know if Paul. I, mean, I appreciate that, and the thing that it's such a great the people that got to see it loved it and yeah. just went this is what you know and it's not bashing anything else at monster palooza but everybody's like this is this is what i remember as a kid mm -hmm. you know this is what got me into monsters you know and they said this is this is like this is monster palooza to me you know yeah yeah a hundred percent yeah. yeah, you know what and I love. Everybody love started asking us, of course, what are we doing next year? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, that yeah. was my next. That was my next question. How are you going to top that? <laughs> yeah, I've I've got something else planned, but it's not an Aurora kit. So, okay. <laughs> but it's it is definitely larger than life, and uh, all, all I'll tease right now is that it is Frankenstein themed. It's something that we've all seen before if we're fans of the monster, and. Uh, it's, it's, again, it's, it's a larger than life display and it's going to be a certain point where I hope my wife doesn't divorce me. So, <laughs> because I just keep going bigger and bigger and bigger with these. It's so, so good though. I love the fact that you included the instructions. Yeah. Yes. That was, that was such a cool yeah. time. We wanted I mean, to do it, so much. Yeah. We wanted and to the, very, the, I mean, or I want the notches are called a but. neural. I, I've been uh, educated on that's that's actually that's that's uh, a that's, neural. that's okay. a neural. I wasn't I wasn't aware of that. That's that's awesome. Thank you know you. What? That makes me frazzled. Honestly, that's a neural. <laughs> I, know, I, remember, <laughs> I remember that from a seventh grade metals class that we actually made our own yes or something. And when you had it on a lathe. That's knurling. So that's you know, for exa any exactly. kind of tool that, yes. that has a grip. And it's funny. It's like until I heard it, I would have never been able to come up with that. But that's those little bumps. Right. And and I, I know that, too, because I took a metals class my freshman year in high school. And that's the only reason why I, I, it's reminded me of that. That's exactly it. And that's knurling. Yeah. I, I know kneading. That's what you do with bread. I know. Uh, and clay. Turning, that's what uh, you do with typography. You bring I know what noodling is when you're going to go catfishing. Noodling, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, Wait, what's yeah. canoodling? Yes, canoodling. Yes, yeah. Yeah. canoodling. Cadiddling, that's a different thing. Yes. <laughs> we, but we digress. And I digress. Again, again, I can't help myself.
<laughs> me neither. That's why I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that we know that your mom might be watching Ted, we're going to dial it back. You yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> You're the one who went into the brothel I, talk. <laughs> I know. I, 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 my mom does a great quick. sense of humor. <laughs> Well, my mom's uh, probably watching two Ted, so I mean it's it's a, it's, all, it's all the right reasons, you know. You know. <laughs> my mom refuses to watch; she will not watch. She Smart says, get to, "Get to two hundred episodes, maybe I'll watch." <laughs> <laughs> then you've done. I'll think kid. about it. I'll think about it. Okay, mom. I'll do my best, mom. <laughs> got it. I didn't. I didn't look to see if I got a text back from my mom because I sent her the uh, the link, so I haven't heard my text go off. She may not be watching. She'll watch on replay. There, there That's you go. Right. She'll, she'll watch. Right. She'll watch a replay. <laughs> she'll, so, she'll, she'll make sure to give you a like and a follow. Thank That's you. Right. Please, That's we right. we always welcome that. Um, so let, let's let's close out with some some awesome things on on, on Ted's uh, Instagram. His new Instagram, uh, the phone faber. Uh, check him Thank out. Uh, <laughs> the the the. Oh my this God! Is like what surreal. Is the out talk, Mickey. I don't. Yeah, I mean, Hank, what are you talking about? Just right, you know, scared me. We still got an hour. You know, we're fine. We're fine. Sorry. <laughs> <guys>. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. Don't don't make us leave. I'm sorry, so, I have to be. I'm the killjoy of, of what a show. jerk. Okay. <laughs> but these these are so amazing. Like I can't. I know. It's, it's, that's that's an oldie that keeps popping up. Well, I make it pop up. I I think that's my my thanksgiving tradition now on instagram or facebook or whatever it's like eh, i made this turkey several years ago for a thanksgiving show and uh they never used it so somebody might <laughs> so as well just, never used it yeah so no it's another one of those weird things it was made for a tv show called uh, hollywood game night yeah. that was hosted by uh, jane lynch it was a oh. fun show and I got a call out of the blue, and it's like, oh, we're doing this huge Thanksgiving episode. And um, they had this uh, popcorn bowl in the middle of the table, and it would spin around, and it would blast you with popcorn, you know, like with an air blast. And, and so they wanted to have a turkey. So the turkey was built over the popcorn popper, and it, it's huge. I mean, I'm sure you've got other pictures where I'm wearing it on my head. It is not a small thing because it had to fit over the, uh, you know, it had to fit over their popcorn thing. And they were going to shoot this huge Thanksgiving episode. And at the last minute, they decided not to shoot the episode. They, they, oh. they canned it. So that's showbiz. So, kid. Like, well, that's so showbiz. I'm, it, it's sitting in someone's prop, uh, prop <laughs> warehouse right now. I don't know if it's ever been used for anything, but. You know, they paid for it. They get to keep yeah. it, and it's it's sitting in a prop warehouse. I'm hoping someday there's going to be some episode of a show or a yeah. whatever. And it's going. Oh, look at that giant turkey! That's kind of weird. Exactly. hey, that's mine. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, your, that's your career right there. You look, you watch TV. It's like, oh, there's my work again. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I there there was one year. This is years ago, and when I worked at Legacy Effects, we did so many commercials. We, you know, we did all of the Geico pig commercials and all the Affleck duck and the nice. Jack Sling Sasquatch, uh, oh, the Burger man. King that every the, the creepy Burger King that everybody loves. <laughs> and so I'm I'm home one year for Christmas, and they're playing all the Christmas commercials and all these different. And commercial comes on. I'm sitting there with my dad, and it was like, oh, I worked on this commercial, and I think it was a Burger King commercial. And he goes, you did? What'd you do? And I said, well, I dressed up the Burger King and we built this thing and that. He goes, oh, that's kind of neat. Next commercial comes up. <laughs> oh, I worked on this one too. He's like, no, you did it. And I said, no, oh, the creature right there, we did that. And I puppeteered that. Really? And I was like, yeah, really? Huh. The third commercial that comes up, I said, I worked on this one too. And he goes, no, now you're just lost. That's not 100% true, I promise. He probably oh, thinks you're gaslighting him. <laughs> yeah, he's like, ah, you're lying to me, kid. That's hilarious. Yep. So, like, what? tell us about this one. Uh, now, I think that was for a Honda spot. Um, okay. Honda or Hyundai, and I honestly, honestly can't remember which one. Um. But it was, it was a series of car commercials that we did at Legacy Effects. And, you know, I was always responsible for the, the muscles, the understructure, the, 
all that kind of stuff. And then usually the fur as well. So the fur from the neck down. And I was actually just recently asked this question. I was talking to somebody and they said, well, why didn't you do the fur on the face? And I said, well, I usually do the fur from like the top of the head and around the face and back. And they said, well, why don't you do the fur on the face? And I said, well, that's the hair department does that. You know, they do all the hair punching and the flocking and the trimming yeah. and things like that. And well, why don't you do the eyes? And it's like, well, because the eye and teeth department does that. And I mean, wait a minute, there's departments for eyes and teeth and for hair punching. And it's like, yes, there's fabrication departments and mold departments. And so when you start working at a shop that big, you know, and you've got anywhere from sometimes as few as like 30 people to, you know, nearly 200 people working in the shop, you know, you can't touch everything that's on the show. So you've got the mold shop doing all the fiberglassing and the mold making and, you know, the, the foam room that's doing all the casting and silicone and foam latex and mechanics. Yeah. And, you know, so everybody, you know, it takes, you know, sometimes dozens of people, depending on the project, you know, or at least, you know, at least one to two people from every department is going to touch a character like this. But I, again, you know, this was, this started out as a tall creature. You can see the, the, the concept drawing on the left there. Yeah. Was a fairly tall character and they wanted this kind of large monster and it's going to drive the car around. It's getting ready for work. And uh-huh. so I built a prototype, which I was hoping was going to be partly the finish suit as well. And I was built on me. And I think with some small lifts on my feet and then with the animatronic head i came in at about six foot eight you know closer to seven feet tall and the car was not a big car (laughs) and they were like uh you're never gonna fit in the car because we went and did a test fitting with the uh the actual car like it's never gonna work and uh so we ended up getting a different performer because i was going to play the performer to play the character Mm. and so we ended up uh, who we ended up getting in the costume there on the right hand side is a uh, 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 actress performer uh, Misty uh, and I, I'm, I'm going to be terrible I'm going to butcher her last name but Misty uh, Rojas I believe Misty I'm sorry if I butchered your last name but she ended up playing the character uh, Queel on uh, the first season of Mandalorian oh the the, the, the Misty character. So the, the, the Ognot character who is voiced by uh, Nick Nolte. Wow. Gosh. So and it, we I dressed Misty in tons of outfits, different suits and costumes in all of my years at Legacy and Stan Winston Studios. Wow. And she's she's extremely tolerant of all that kind of stuff. <laughs> More tolerant than me, and I I did my fair share of, you know creature suit wearing and um but yeah the people that that do that for a living i mean i sometimes got into a creature suit just in happenstance you know i'm the right height and uh i fit it okay and the fact that i'm building it and i can be in the shop every day and try it on every day and try it on for clients and so i i would luck out often this was this was a fun one that I saw that you did. <laughs> oh, I love that one. Yeah, with the big middle finger at one point. That's- yes, yep. yes. The big the big reveal. Um, and uh, yeah, That's, this- uh, Chris O'Dowd played that. He's you know famous for the IT crowd and um, oh, uh, uh, bridesmaids. Mm. You know, so many other projects that he's done, and he he wore that costume for uh, Christopher Guest film mascots. But yeah, that was a ton of fun. And it was, if anybody's looking at the costume going, it looks a little bit beat up, Ted. It looks a little bit dirty and not, it's supposed to look like a homemade costume. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, each one it's, of these. It's a hockey. It's hockey. For the, and yeah. It's, I remember it's, being a hockey it's thing. Hockey. It's, there's nothing clean about there's, hockey. Yeah. No, no, no. And each one of the mascot costumes already are supposed to look like they're homemade. Yeah. So, <laughs> but of course, they have to be built well enough you know, to, to hold up to it. So right. yeah, there's the, uh, that, that was the whole idea with this character. Cause he, he's a really irreverent, you know, hockey mascot. And if he doesn't like what the players are doing, or he doesn't like what the people in the stands are saying, 
turns his back to him. You know, he, he, <laughs> the character was the fist. So it's like this fist that skates around. If you didn't like it, doink, you got the – my buddy Rick Allenson did the uh, the mechanism for that finger. So the, the hockey uh, – the person in the costume. Chris O'Dowd wore it several times. Several times. Then there's some stunt bits that uh, we had a, a pro skater where, and they could actually pull a, a lever and make the finger flip up. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that to be marked? That should be ready, readily available at Halloween time from the masses. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I still have the patterns for it. So, uh, hey, Christina. It, it just goes to show you when someone says, hey, I need a giant turkey to fit over a popcorn thing or I need a, a, a human sized middle finger skating mask. I mean, you basically get some of the craziest, I imagine, um, requests. And then you just have to sit yep. and say, how am I going to do it? And just you figure it out. I think that's one thing I learned the first time we talked to you was like you are a shop of one in that re regard. And I think that was the thing that uh, really resonated with me over these over the last couple of years is every every time we talk to you 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 can't be a uh, a one trick pony and make it anymore all right i mean in right. order to no, get not at all. Really, you have to just be the guy who says i'm going to go do it i'm going to i'm going to find out a way and just get it done i just i love yeah. that part yeah well it was it was always one of my favorites when i first started at um steve johnson's shop way back and we were working on the the show um monkey bone he was just finishing up uh, Bicentennial Man with Robin Williams and then we were going on to the, the, the movie Monkey Bone and so I did a bunch of prototypes for a lot of the characters in that and I remember we were talking about this one very specific character and I, I had been in the shop for maybe a week and Steve asked me how are you going to do this uh, effect? How are you going to do this gag or this costume? And I just I was like, oh, well, you know I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that and here's how I'm going to approach it and I was just really confident and, you know, so I'm going to go upstairs and start it. I'll start the prototype and you'll see it by probably midday tomorrow. And he's like, okay, great. I just, just wanted to know if, how you were doing it. Yeah. And uh, so then uh, my uh, coordinator, Fernando Faville, he's walking upstairs with me and he goes, so you're talking about this technique that you used before and all this stuff. He goes, what would you use it on before? And I said, oh, I never have. <laughs> and I said, I just, it's been, it's something I've been thinking of for years and I know it's going to work. And he goes, I like your confidence. <laughs> He's like, well, I'm not going to tell him I don't know how I'm going to do it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a non starter. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, I've never done it before, Steve, but I'm pretty sure I can do it. Yeah, but then, then you find say, out in this industry. Say, yeah. Then that's, that's the, that's the easy button for them to say, well, we're going to get a guy who can. So, uh, thank God. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, and you find that out with everybody in this industry. It's like you're, it's your job is to problem solve. Yep. You know, it's that's that's the job is problem solving. You you've got your tools with you, your your, you know your your years of experience and your artistic talent, um, and you know every job that comes to you, you don't know what you're gonna, how you're gonna exactly approach it. Right. Um, you know, one muscle suit is is very similar to the last one, but there's going to be different parameters for it or some creature sure. character, not, you know, not everything's the same. So, That's so, cool. um, so here, here, here's something. Um, so I now teach a class uh, at university. So I, I'm, when I teach my students, um, like I tell them exactly that it's, it's all about problem solving. And uh, one of the things that, that I'm finding that younger students now that are coming in uh, to graphic graphic design or just design in general um, is they're getting like a month to work on a project. And I'm like, Oh no, like I want to <laughs> develop a, a course that basically does what we do on this show is give them prompts and they have to do, they have to do something by the end of whatever the class is. Yeah, and they all agreed that would be very challenging, but also we would have a body of work of things that we would have, and so I feel that that has definitely enhanced my career in in graphic design. I just had they're just like we need this, we need it by the end of the day, 
like figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. Right. <laughs> and I, I'm no, sure and in your, your field, I mean, making props, I mean, the level of difficulty is even higher. We, I, yeah, when you're, you're, there's a lot of times where we're just asked to do something on the fly, you know, build a lemon head, build this, build that. Yeah. It's got to be done by the end of the day. It's like, who's going to wear it? Um, is it male, female right. person? Is their head this big or that big? We don't know. Just make a lemon head. It's got to fit anybody. And it's got to be maybe um, uh, custom, you know, it's like, so don't make the neck hole too big because it might be a small neck. You know, so wow. then that pertains to the next job too. It's like, okay, well, I did this on the last job and but you have to be able to think on your feet. Again, it's just problem solving and yeah, giving somebody a month to do something. Yeah. I, too, I, I told them, time. I go, I, I, I can guarantee what you're doing in a month is basically you're making it and all you're doing for <laughs> the rest of the 29 days is you're going how can I make this like, what, what, is this good enough? Is this, what, what am I doing? What am I, and yeah, it's like, right. it just becomes a whole bunch of like indecisions and nobody right. realistically has a month to work on a project. <laughs> no, it's, and if, I mean, like you, you think about a month, a month is a long time, but when we're working like in a film project or something like that. And you're taking it. If you've got to build a monster, you know, yeah. like this, you know, where this is like a two week project or like the Yoda is a two week project, something mm -hmm. like that. But, you know, imagine think, you know, it's like you need this in four weeks, but number and you need the whole costume and it's got to be animatronic. Yes. And, you know, so it's like you have to hit the ground running. Yeah. It's like you have to start sculpting on day one. You know, yeah. hopefully you've already got a design. And right. uh, no, a month is just but a lot of people you you can't. It's almost like you can't. Well, you're trying to teach that. You're trying to teach that. It's like you're not going to get this much time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And some of that you have to learn in the shop, you know, where you, you almost can't teach it at times where it's like, well, you'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about and, and you should be formulating it in your head as they're talking almost. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's right. it's the it's the learning on the job or on the fly where it's just like making it up as you go and hopefully you've got enough skill set to Yep. You know, and, and that's the thing is a lot of us guys my age and, and older and a little bit younger too, it's like you know, I've seen people come into this industry that just you've been doing this since you could hold a tool. You know, mm -hmm. I started when I was about nine or ten, knowing that this is what I wanted to do, you know, doing creatures and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of people don't figure it out until they're in their twenties or sometimes thirties that mm -hmm. or they sometimes don't have the skill. Yeah, fifties. Sometimes they're fifties. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yep. But uh, you know, that's the thing. And then you don't have that that background of like it's like I remember the first plaster mold that I tried to make or the first head cast I tried to do and you know, it, it and that's when I you know, it was before I was a teenager. And it's like, so I screwed up a lot, you know, even before I was a teenager. And then you start to learn. And some people don't even have the uh, the luxury of having made a plaster mold until they were like 25 or 30 years old. Or, wow, yeah. And it's like, well, yeah. I always thought this would be cool. And, you know, I didn't do a lot of art classes. And it's like, you're either going to really advance quickly or you're not going to be here long, you know. And it's it's that 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 quick learning you have to do. Yep. And to me, that's the fun of it. Yep. I always preferred working on commercials and things like that than film, because sometimes with film, you're given too much time. Yeah, you know, it's like, eh, this doesn't have to be on set for six months, for five <laughs> months. And and then sometimes it's like, you forget about that. And then it, it's happened from time to time. And it's like, oh, that's so far away. Yeah. That we don't even need to worry about it. Let's work on a dozen commercials first. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh shit, this has to be on set next month. Yeah. <laughs> we barely started it right. because we've been doing all of this stuff or we thought we had so much time. And you know, that 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 happens as well. So so Ted, uh let's let's see what you got there. What uh, let's see what you're working on. You know, I'm just starting as a face, and you guys are so much quicker with this stuff than me. Oh, stop it. And I'm trying to figure out what toy, you know, I wanted to start with a face. Oh. oh. Uh -huh. 
Oh my god! So he got a bit of an eye roll, start of that smugness, and I'm trying yeah. to <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the mouth. So the brows will come in a little bit. Oh, he's got the perfect so shape. I mean, I love the the yeah. overall. He's got, he's, got a, he's got a nice smug shape. Yes. <laughs> and I, I think I'm going to carve down a little bit more. I can feel I'm getting the, that weird. Um, uh, trampoline kind of, yeah. It's, it's, it's got this weird um, uh, cell structure in here. And I don't know if that's just indicative of all pumpkins that you get that. And you start getting you know, close to quite the center. As, yeah, I think that's probably what's maybe, going on. It's like this is a, it, I, I know I took one of the tips you guys gave on one of the shows was, you know, pick it up. You want the, the heaviest pumpkin means it's the thickest skin. Right. And I think it, one of you guys were saying that. And uh, so I've got another pumpkin over here on the table about the same size. And I'm like, which one's heavier? And I was going to the bin. And it's like, heavy, no, not heavy. Oh, this is really light, but it's really big. So it's got a thin skin. And yeah. Um, so it, I, I started out with smugness. And I'll, I'll see what kind of a misfit toy he's going to become. I'm, I'm, I'm kind it. of thinking maybe like a, a chubby uh, ventriloquist doll or something like that. <laughs> I love it. Paul, what do you got? You're on wow. mute. Nice. <laughs> Sorry. We need closed captioning. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Nice. Way off and running. Uh, somebody somebody drank their uh, caffeine today. You're uh, <laughs> No, I'll tell you what. There's there's the first side when I started doing one uh -huh. thing. <laughs> and then I stopped and switched gears when I realized I could do this. Oh. So so I kind of want to wait because I do have an actual idea to tell exactly what it's going to be. But if I don't screw it up, it could be funny. So, okay, there you go. But it's on the way. It's definitely going to be a misfit toy. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> 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 nice. thinks it's a glow worm. I don't know. I'm starting to think that uh, we need to be on the dark web for what I. Oh, that would have been a good one. Like a like a he's a doing blow worm. Like he's hooked on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the uh, the first uh, 15 minutes, 10 minutes of next week's show, and you're showing what you've done is either going to be blacked out. <laughs> or it's going to have like a, an X rating or something like that. Right. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. This, this, this yours only. Yeah. All sculpted. <laughs> this yeah. should be the parental advisory. <laughs> right. I'll keep it within reason. There you go. Um, okay, so I'm I'm way early, way early, but I I had this idea of doing a smug, and I'm using the idea of this jack o' lantern, or not jack o' lantern, jack in the box. So I've got oh. kind of the box started down here, and then his head is going to be on kind of a, a, a spring. And I, there's a lot of a lot of things I'm thinking, but I'm, I'm really early, and thankfully I've got a lot of meat in his face to 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 make him more smug. But this will all be a spring, and who knows? I mean, I I got a couple ideas. Yeah, it's look like it's coming together quite nicely there. <laughs> I I love when we get stuck with these crazy choices on the wheel because you're like duh what am i gonna do <laughs> it's definitely I, but, there's gonna definitely be a lot that what that's funny mcbrown says i should have thought yeah. of that a blow worm that was <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that caption come up and oh man yeah uh, no I, I, this, this one will be good this one will be decent i i, I wanted to do like a um like a maniacal munchichi remember those Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I went in a di little different. It was going to be Barney at first, like Barney, but he's not allowed in school zones. Like you know, completely oh. misfit Barney. But and then I went another direction. Then all the old toys started coming back to me. So Manchichi, Manchichi, oh so something oh, totally. totally. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna have that in my head now. <laughs> yep. Thank and you, then Michael. gummy bears bouncing <laughs> here and there and everywhere. <laughs> we didn't grow up on TV, did we? No, no, I'm not gonna go watch TV after this either. Yeah. Um, Ted, I wanted to um show this yeah. project because I wanted to give oh, a shout out oh, to your, wow. your very talented wife that uh she yeah, worked yeah. with on this project. So, uh, this is a fantastic one, yeah. Th th that's our that's our ratchet, um, of our ratchet and clank, and it really was just all it's all hands on deck. 
probably like five or six people that, that got into this and just every, every tool in the kit came out of this. I mean, 3d printing. Oh, good. Um, yeah. The, oh, wow. the head up there in the upper right hand corner that was milled out of foam from the digital asset from uh, PlayStation. Uh, we had that milled out of foam at Daniel's uh, sculpture enlargement um, in Silmar, California or San Fernando. They actually did our Frankenstein as well, did all the milling for the Frankenstein. Oh, God. And then that got turned into a vacuform buck, which then went to um, uh, Prop Masters and they did the vacuform shells. Those shells got put together. My wife did all the hair work, all the fur oh work on this. So and good. she comes from a, a background of doing like mascots and doing a lot of fur and hair work. Um, so she did the painting on this. She did all the hair work, the stitching. Um, I really kind of, I, I definitely took a back seat to her on a lot of these projects. I did a lot of the tech work. So where she doesn't really know all that, but I mean, she snapped right into like mold making as well and uh working with all the different urethanes and paints and things like that we came up with a new paint system to paint the alloy costume um as well as other urethane pieces and uh so we we're super proud of that but yeah i mean this again was like you know my wife myself uh david woodruff was on this my friend rick gallinson who's brilliant mechanic and electrician um you know electronics guy did all of our electronics work on this character um james springham who is uh doing digital assets with this jasper Jeez. anderson alana suen so we had all these people in our small little shop or we were outsourcing to a bunch of these people as well and uh you know i i did a lot of tech work on this you know so it was a lot of mold making and it's like going to my wife going what do you need now dear <laughs> so <laughs> you know, she, she headed up a lot of these but yeah she just is super talented and just you know like like a good artist will not admit it so you well, you married up is what i'm hearing <laughs> so I, I i i way married up i way married up you have no idea so that's so awesome yeah i've i've had the pleasure of meeting her and then speaking of coming back out there i i have to give one final i mean again i'm going to say it a million times between now and when we go out there but Paul, Mickey, and I are so elated that we're going to be like next to you again at, at Monster Palooza. It is, it is like yeah. in our minds, and I'll speak for the three of us. It is like our guys' weekend slash trip to Disney slash the Hall of Fame of everybody we love, and you know, just rolled into one. And to be able to to be next to you is like you know the the, the icing on the cake. So we're just so so happy and stoked that, that uh, we, we get to do it again in June. Oh. All you're doing is reminding me of this ginormous project that I've already, I've already told Elliot, who runs Monster Palooza. It's his show. It's I've already told him about this idea. And oh I'm no! Like, oh crap! I've, I've got to start that. No, you're not. <laughs> it must I've be been doing a lot of now. and designing, and it's I mean it involves two figures that are well over six feet tall and oh a God. whole elaborate set that goes with it and. Um, it is not an Aurora model kit. Again, I like I said, I have so many people going, you guys should do the mummy. You should do the Wolfman. You should do it. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I know it was, it, the, the Aurora kit was super fun to do, but yeah, um, I, I want to do something different. That's amazing. I can't wait to see it because I'm pretty sure yeah. you're going to do it. Yeah. It's so check out I'll, I'll, I'll do it. the foam faber, the foam faber wow. on Instagram. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, uh, please check him out. He's a great friend of the show. Um, hey, check us out. We're on a Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Uh, guys, did you want to promote? Uh, it's a recorded show next week, but do you want to promote? Or should we? Uh, should we? Well, hold it's recorded, so yeah, we, we, can, we, we already locked in. <laughs> it's going to happen. So go yes. ahead, go ahead. Well, next week we have Brian Wade, the great and talented. Unbelievably yeah. talented, Brian Wade, and it's a great time. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. and the wheel lands on another one, which is like, what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> In fact, I gotta, send, I gotta send you pictures, Mick. Of, of our, I think I don't have them. Yeah, well, we, we we need them for the one after that. Yeah, so we gotta like, post. Yeah, we'll post yeah, it after that. But yeah, we're gonna have a double reveal. It'll yeah. be it'll be this one and the other one. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So millionaire Clayboy himself. Yes. Um, and he couldn't have been a more gracious, exciting, such a great guest. guy. 
so fun. I, I don't know if you know him, Ted, but he's just a, such a he must. Uh, I, great guy. I, I, I don't, I know the name and I don't believe I ever worked with him. So it's like, it's some of these people that you, you just kind of float in these circles and it's like, yeah. Oh yeah, that guy, that, it's like, and yeah. I never touch base with him. So, so you, you mentioned but, uh, a character from the thing, like he worked on the thing. Yeah. He, he, he did the first the Terminator. He worked on a bunch of other really amazing oh, things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did the Demi Gorgon, right? Yeah, he, he did the Demi Gorgon in the, fir in the first uh, season of uh, Stranger Things. He's, you know, he's got right. he's got a, a couple of uh, Oscar credits to his name, including the the Eyes of Tammy Faye he just got I, last I, year. I, so it's just right. staggering about, and, and it's like Ted when we when we talk to you, it's like the, every story we hear are, are like those drool worthy. Holy crap, you worked on that and this, and you know, so same kind of same kind of really fun uh, experience, and we're like. Uh, how, how are we in the same room? I don't understand. Anyway. <laughs> well, we're not. That's what makes it's it like, comfortable. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> miles away. Right there. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Incredible it's projects like, I work on, like seed people and demonic toys, and you know those <laughs> those huge blockbustery films that I worked on in my early the Lawnmower Man. I mean, my God! Oh, I see. Oh, oh, Academy man. Award winning. Yeah. Well, the, you got snubbed, all right? You, yeah, somehow we, the, 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 the Academy just looked past you on that one, but it's coming back. <laughs> one more man, too. You dropped the, uh, the monkey bone name earlier, you know, the, the, the very famous <laughs> Henry Selnick, Brendan Fraser monkey bone, you know. Very He's underrated film. That's right. Award-winning. <laughs> hey, yeah. Brendan Fraser is super popular now, so I don't know what, what's going ah, on. He is. He's coming He's back around. He's a super great guy. I mean, I got to hang around with him a bunch on Monkey Bone, and there is not a nicer person that I – it's just just so gracious and what a humble guy. I mean, back then – and that was right when the first Mummy was coming out, and he was just <laughs> such a super nice guy. Yeah, he's having a bit of – he's having a, like a John Travolta yeah. resurgence. Yes, well, he gained the weight yeah. like Travolta did when he came back, so it makes him lovable. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. He's, uh, he went from a hunk to like a, a middle Midwest school mom. You know, he was <laughs> robust, if you will. He's robust. Hey, if, I, if I put on a few more pounds, will well, I be more lovable? <laughs> I think that's it's what it's impossible. Means. You're the most well, lovable human being. Let's, let's, let's all do it. Let's all do it. Let's see how much more. Oh, There's more to love. Hey, I just, I just got a text. I just got a text. I saw it. My mom has been watching. Yay! Hey! Hey! Hi, Hi, mom. Hey, I finally get to do that. Hi, mom. <laughs> Remember Carol Burnett? Uh, this thing is <laughs> that's you know, right. my mom thing. Wow, that's a, that's, a, Hi, mom. that's a 50 year old reference right there. I'm man. sorry, Nick. I'm old. It's a good now. one. It's a good one. We it all is. know it. It is a good one. Hopefully, we get my mom on. Hi, mom. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Next show, we still have a long way to go. Next show. Oh, okay, well, uh, wait, sometime when go, I'm home Mickey, with my mom, we'll do a show from my mom's place. There you go. There Perfect. you go. That's the next one. See, that's on, on episode five of the Ted Haynes uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. round with us. Um, Mickey, I just thought of another stupid reference. Remember, remember in um, uh, Talladega Nights when Ricky Bobby always, you know, he's, he's opening his deal. He leaves the tickets for his dad. His dad never shows up. That's what we're going to do with your mom. We're going to just be like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mrs. Bob every week. Come on. This is the time, right, mom? <laughs> she exactly. never shows. Damn it. Uh, I've, only, I've only done 300 Excellent. live streams and uh, yeah, that's, I, I'm, I can't be anywhere. To, I can't be found. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, Again, um, next week will be a pre-recorded episode of Carvers and Creators. Please check Good it one. out. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, you Paul. Bet. We'll see you next week with another Carvers and Creators. Take care, everyone. Good night. Adios.